Dear students, in the last class, we discussed about the ME3 topics. That is a differentiation, de-differentiation and re-differentiation. So, these are all the three important phenomena which is occurs in the plant growth and the development. That is a differentiation. Differentiation means the cells derived from root apical, shoot apical, meristems and cambium differentiate and mature to perform specific function. So, this is termed as a differentiation. So, some of the cell, some of the cell, they gets, it means a, a some of the meristematic cells, they gets mature and performs a, a particular function. So, those type of uh, um, uh, cells are called as a differentiation. The type of phenomenon is called as a differentiation. And next, another one is a de-differentiation. De-differentiation means already differentiated cell. Already differentiated cell means it the cell it becomes mature. So that mature cells, the already differentiated cell, differentiated cell, once again, once again, they regains the capacity to divide. It regains the capacity to divide under a certain conditions. Under certain conditions, it is called as a de-differentiation. It is called as a de-differentiation. And another one phenomena that is a redifferentiation. Redifferentiation means already de-differentiated cell. De-differentiated cell means they are the meristematic cells. So which have a capability to divide. So those de-differentiated cell once again it lost the capacity to divide and it gets some mature and performs their own function. So it is called as a redifferentiation. So these are all the three phenomena. Differentiation. De-differentiation and re-differentiation. Differentiation means the cells which gets mature and performs their own function. De-differentiation means the differentiated cell, the differentiated cell once it regains the capacity to divide, regains the capacity to divide under a certain condition. So that is called as a de-differentiation. Redifferentiation means already de-differentiated cell. It once again lost the capacity to divide. It gets mature and performs their own function. It is called as a redifferentiation. So these two phenomena are called as differentiation, de-differentiation, and redifferentiation. Okay, and next another one main a concept that is a development. Development means all the changes, all the changes that occurs, that occurs throughout the lifespan in a plant. So that is called as a development. Development is a term, is a term that includes, that includes all changes, all changes that an organism, that an organism goes through, goes through during its life cycle, during its life cycle, from generation of the seed to senses, from the generation of the seed to senses, it is called as a development. It means all the changes that occurs in the plants throughout their lifespan, it is called as a development. And next is a, another one important phenomenon which is occurs in a plantlet. So that is called as a plasticity. In the, in the last class, I will tell, uh, uh, I will discuss about the plasticity. So plasticity, it is the ability of plants. It is the ability of plants that follow follow different pathways, different pathways in response to in response to environment, environment or phases of life, phases of life to form to form different kinds of structure. That means the plants which have a ability to change their structure. The plants which have a ability to change their structure response to, response to two factors. One is an environmental factor. One is an environmental factor. And another one is a life phases. It is nothing. Plasticity in the rich type of The plants which have a capacity to change their structure. Our plants colorly other parts, any parts of the organ. Change has one capacity. Yeah, change has two factors in the one factor. The plants have a capacity to change their structure. One is a responsive way. One the response has environmental factors. And another one is a life phases. 
was by two uh, factors which have a capacity to change the plant structure so that is called as a plasticity mainly there are the two factors one is a life phases and another one is environmental factors first phase that is a life phases in a life phases all the living organism which having a, a major three phases of a life one is a vegetative phase the vegetative phase it is otherwise called as the vegetative phase it is otherwise called as a, a, a vegetative phase or juvenile phase juvenile phase or vegetative phase and another one is a reproductive phase reproductive phase or maturity phase and last one is a sensuous phase or a aging phase so these are all the three main phases which having a in a, a which uh, how uh, sorry these are all the a three main phases uh, which involves in a plant or animals living organism or any living organism one is a juvenile phase it is otherwise called as a vegetative phase juvenile phase or vegetative phase and reproductive phase or maturity phase and last one is a sensuous phase or aging phase first is a vegetative phase or a uh, juvenile phase so particularly in a plant plants in a plant plants the vegetative phase means all the vegetative parts of the plant body will be developed in this stage of the plant plants the vegetative parts like a it is a any parts like a it may be a, a root stem and leaves root stem and leaves are the these are all the juvenile phase juvenile phase or vegetative phase so vegetative phase means it is a, a phase or the it is a time there is a development of only a vegetative parts of the plant body the vegetative parts of the plant like it is a root stem and leaves are the vegetative parts of the plant body so these are all the plants which grows particularly in this state that is called as a vegetative phase or a, a juvenile phase and next phase that is called as a reproductive phase reproductive phase means it is the development of a flower after ending of a vegetative phase the plant it next starts with the another phase that is called as a reproductive phase we can easily identify the reproductive phase in a plants uh, how that means in a plants when the plants it produce a flowering so that a stage it indicates the plants it reaches to the next phase that is called as a reproductive phase because in a plants the reproductive part the main reproductive part in a plants that is called as a flower because the flower it consists of mainly two reproductive parts like a, that is a uh, one is a male gametophyte and a female gametophyte that is a androecium and a gynoecium so because of these reason the reproductive phase uh, identified by the flowering in a plant like and last phase that is called as a sensuous phase or a aging phase so the sensuous phase means all the plant life after reaching the reproductive phase it ends of their life so that is called as a sensuous phase or a aging phase in a aging phase all the metabolic activity of the cell they become slowed down and it leads to the death of the organism that is called as a last phase and next is another one main factor that is called as environmental factors the environmental factors like it may be a sunlight or a temperature humidity water so this are all the environment environmental factor which affects on the plant plants to change their structure so that is called as a plasticity the ability of a plants it changes the structure structure responds with the environmental factors and the life phases ಈಗ ಇದು ಇಷ್ಟ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಯ್ತಲ್ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಲೈಫ್ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ದ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಾವ್ ಅ ಕೆಪಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಚೇಂಜ್ ದರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ನ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಮಾಡೋ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಯಾವಾಗ ದ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯಾವಾಗ ಒಂದು ಗೊತ್ತಾಯ್ತೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ देयर ಆರ್ ದ 3 ಫೇಸಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಜುವಿನೈಲ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ವೆಜಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅನದರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಮ್ಯಾಚುರಿಟಿ ಫೇಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಏಜಿಂಗ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಈಗ ಬನ್ನಿ for example in cotton in cotton and a coriander the leaves of the juvenile plant are different in shape from those in a mature plant this is called as a heterophyly for example you can coriander leaves nodutrala indro so in a coriander leaves there are the changes in their leaf shape leaf shape alli changes irutte observe madidira so there are the a two uh, shape uh, which is occurs in a coriander leaves coriander leaves alli eradu shape irutte the leaf will be same the plant will be same 
but which have got two different leaf structure because it is responsive with the life phases juvenile phase means that is a vegetative phase in a vegetative phase or in a vegetative condition the leaf shape will be different when it has reaches with the maturity phase the shape of the leaf it becomes changed change aata hogutte so that is called as a uh, uh, example for the plasticity in case there is a change in the leaf structure there is a change in the leaf structure so that is called as a heterophyly heterophyly means there is a change in the leaf structure it is called as a heterophyly and another one example for the plasticity that is called as a buttercup the buttercup it is a same plant which is grows in a, a different two terrestrial areas one is a the buttercup plant which is grows both in a aquatic condition and as well as a terrestrial condition but the leaf shape will be changed from terrestrial to the aquatic condition based on the environmental condition andre ega aquatic condition hydrophytic condition alle adrudu environmental factors change irutte when it is come with the terrestrial area bandra alli environmental factors change irutte so the plant will be same but which having a different leaf structure so that is called as a plasticity ig idishtu artha aithe indra one is a plasticity the ability of plants which responses to change their structure which responses to environment or a life phase that is called as a plasticity example for the plasticity is a coriander and buttercup are the examples for the plasticity and next is a there is a growth differentiation and development growth differentiation and development are very closely related events in the life of a plant development in plants is under the control of intrinsic and extrinsic factors so that means in the plant life growth it depends upon the major two uh, factors one is extrinsic uh, factors and another one is a intrinsic factor i already told that the extrinsic factors are like a, that is a environmental factor in the last class we discussed it that is a conditions for the growth there are the extrinsic factor or external factors which involves in the plant growth that is a light temperature oxygen and environmental gravity so these are all the some of the extrinsic factor or external factor which affects on the growth of the plant and next is that is another one main important factors which affects on the growth of the plant plant that is called as a intrinsic factor so what are those intrinsic factors so the intrinsic factors in a plant they are called as a plant growth regulators it is called as a plant growth regulators the plant growth regulators the plant growth regulators it is also called as a it is also called as a plant hormones plant hormones or it is otherwise called as a phyto hormones one is a plant growth regulators or a phyto hormones or a plant hormones so these are all the hormones hormones or is these are all the intrinsic factors intrinsic factors which is helpful for the growth of the plant plants okay these are all small molecules these are all small molecules of of diverse chemical composition these are all the small molecules of the chemical composition they are the organic substance they are organic substance produced in produced in certain part of the plants they are organic substance produced in certain part of the plants in small quantities small quantities they affect growth process the plant hormones the plant hormones are divided into divided into groups groups mainly two groups based on their functions based on their functions in a living plant body plant hormones or a phyto hormones they are a chemical compounds which is occurs in a plant plants so based on the these characters the plant growth hormones they can be classified into two types one is a plant growth promoter one is a growth promoter and another one is a growth inhibitor One is a growth promoter and growth inhibitor. Growth 
growth sorry growth promoters growth promoters means many of the phyto hormones many of the phyto hormones are involved in are involved in growth promoting activities they are involved in growth promoting activity such as such as cell division cell division cell enlargement cell enlargement flowering flowering tropic growth fruiting and seed formation promote the growth process and are called growth promoters that means growth promoters means these are all the hormones which induces the growth or which promotes the growth illi hormones kali enta help agutte andre which uh, enhances the growth growth na enhance maartta hogutte plants lalli but the growth inhibitors which inhibits which stops the growth in the plantlet it inhibits the name itself it indicates promote means it promotes the growth inhibit means it inhibits or it stops the growth in the plantlet so these are all the main two types of a plant growth regulators one is a promoter and another one is a inhibitor for examples for the growth promoters they are the auxins gibberellins and cytokines Oxys, gibberellins, and cytokines. Next is a growth inhibitor. Growth inhibitor means many of the phyto hormones, many of the phyto hormones are also are also involved in involved in various growth inhibiting activities, which is involved in various growth inhibiting activities such as such as dormancy, dormancy, and abscission. examples for the growth inhibitors they are the abscisic acid and ethylene abscisic acid and ethylene in the list of important to nenpal irbekagi main age enandre plant growth regulators that can be classified into two types one is a promoter and inhibitor examples for the promoter and examples for the inhibitor kelthar nimge example enanta exams alli so write the any two of growth growth promoting hormones or mention the any growth two two growth inhibitors and the hector so or explain the physiological effects of a physi physiological effects of a, a growth promoting hormones and the hector aga nimu gottirbeku growth promoting hormones andre avaga growth inhibiting hormones andre avadu anta the first is a growth promoting hormones yavaga that is a auxins gibberellins and cytokines auxins gibberellins and cytokines the growth inhibiting hormones are the abscisic acid and the ethylene abscisic acid and ethylene so id is correct aithal andro growth plant growth regulators or a phyto hormones or a plant hormones and next that is a first is a plant growth hormones that is first growth hormones that is a auxin auxin was first discovered by the auxin was first discovered by charles Darwin, Charles Darwin, and his son, and his son Francis Darwin, Charles Darwin, and his son Francis Darwin are the two scientists which discovered the oxygen phyto hormone that is a oxygen. If you remember, the oxygen is one of the growth promoting hormone. Charles Darwin and his son Francis Darwin, Charles Darwin and his son Francis Darwin. they observe they observe that they observe that the coleoptiles of canary grass coleoptile is a region of the many monocotyledonous plants so grass is one of the monocot coleoptiles regions of the grass responsive to uh, responsive to unilateral illumination unilateral illumination by by growing towards the light source by growing towards the light source after a series of experiment after a series of experiment it was concluded that it was concluded that the tip of coleoptile the tip of coleoptile was the site of transmittable influence that bending of the entire coleoptile ig nodro nim gottu there is a phototrophism phototrophism and you know the tip of the plant which bends towards the sunlight ala so illi observe madidru any tip of the plant like for example uh, charles darwin and another scientist they taken as a only a monocotyledonous plant to discover the oxygen so in a monocotyledonous plants the tip of the grass the tip of the grass 
they bend towards the sunlight or the coleoptile regions of the tip region of the plantlets they bend towards the sunlight it is because of a presence of a some of the chemical compounds which is occurs in the tip and a conclusion work at so what are those chemical compound and the chemical compound a no so after a series of experiment we concluded that there is a a hormone which is occurs in the tip regions of the plant layer so which is involved in the bending of the plant tip towards the sunlight so later they are named as a oxane oxane was isolated by also another scientist that is a f w n f w n but it is a different plant uh, went using a different plant layer that is a coleoptile of oats seedlings the darwin and his son he used a plant that is a canary grass but when wf when it is used on another one plant that is a oats seedlings or uh, used for the discovery of the oxins he did this to discovery got it how the oxin was discovered later the oxin was classified into uh, before to that after first isolated so after this the oxin was first isolated from urine human urine so as in a animals when we take as animals the oxin was isolated from a human urine first it was discovered in a plant cells and next is a oxins was classified into two types they are synthetic oxins and a natural oxins synthetic oxins are the oxins which is called as artificial oxins it is a artificially we prepared oxins are called as a synthetic oxins natural oxins are the oxins we get them from the plant plantlet plantletal le obtain agant oxins we call it as a natural oxins artificially we synthesized oxins are called as a synthetic oxins so these are all the two types of oxins one is a synthetic oxins and natural oxins idu erudu thumba important kattru examples kal nimge examples for the synthetic and the natural oxins so synthetic oxins are the examples for the synthetic oxins or artificial oxins are the n a a sorry n a a n a a naphthalene acetic acid n a a naphthalene acetic acid and another one example is a 24d 24d means dichlorophenoxyacetic acid il mistake agide nu correct maadkodra n a a na n a a naphthalene acetic acid n a a naphthalene acetic acid 24d 2,4-D means dichlorophenoxyacetic are the a two synthetic oxygen or the artificial oxygen. And next one is the one is a natural oxygen. The natural oxygens are the IAA and IBA. IAA means indoor acetic acid. IAA is the indoor acetic acid. IBA means indoor butyric acid. IBA is the indoor butyric acid. Indoor acetic acid and indoor butyric acid are the two types of a natural oxins edishta type entrel no discovery and the types of a oxins that is the synthetic oxins and synthetic oxins and the natural oxins edishta type entrel so okay we continue in the next class